Let me just another time say welcome to everyone and thank you so much for joining in our service today. And I just want to welcome back the brethren who went to the assembly. Welcome back to church. Nice to have you. And everyone who was not here for a while, welcome back into the house of the Lord. We are so grateful to have some persons visiting with us today. I'm going to ask you that as I call your name, you stand so that you can be recognized. We have Miss Evosley, Evosley Hamilton, that's Sister Kami's mother, in the house today with us. Thank you so much. She's visiting from Connecticut. We also have Althea Thompson from Falmouth, Camille Williams, June Sterling, who is a past member of the church back in, in the house with us visiting today. We thank God for you. And Mr. Kirkland Maitland was here. He has left, but he is requesting that we pray for him. So to all of you, we thank you so much for joining with us today in worship. And we trust that you have been blessed and that you will continue to bask in the presence of the Lord. Can we give our visitors some sugar, everybody? Some more, one more. The price is not gone up on this one. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. There are just a few announcements that I want you to bear in mind. What date is today? <laughs> I asked the date and somebody over here said rally. So they, they know where I'm going with it. All right, today is August 11, and the day has finally come for our rally and sacrificial giving. So we gather back here at 6 p.m. this evening for rally and sacrificial giving. Looking forward to seeing all of you here. Bring, your, bring everybody and come along. That's what the flyer says. So that's at 6 today. Our youth camp will start tomorrow through to the 17 at Ebony Park Heart Academy. And then, um, sorry, that's teen, teen's camp is tomorrow. And then youth camp will be in the other week, um, Sunday. The funeral service for Sister Carlene Blackwood's mother will be this afternoon at 2 p.m. at Grand Hill United Pentecostal Church in Lawrence Tavern. And then on Friday, Sister Karina will lay her grandfather to rest um, at 11 a.m. at Petersville Church of God of Prophecy in Westmoreland. We continue to pray for the families and even those who have buried their loved ones before, we continue to pray their strength and their comfort as they go through this time and remember their loved ones. This afternoon at 2 will be Sunday school for the preteens on Zoom. And as I said before, our rally is at 6 p.m. On Tuesday, we have midday prayer on Zoom at 12, 12 to 1. Please join us if you can. And then Wednesday, it's fasting and prayer right here, face to face at 10 a.m. And then being second Wednesday, it's women's and men's ministry meetings at 7 p.m. Then on Friday, Friday being Friday is when the young people come alive in their youth ministry service. I leave you with the contact information for the church, just in case you need to make a call, you want to make an appointment to see your pastor, you have a baby to, to be dedicated, you want to conduct your wedding here, whatever the reason, make contact with the office. The office number is 876-648-9278. It's open from Monday to Thursday. And then our prayer line is also open to you. The number is 876 334 34 Three, nine. You may get us by sending an email to our church email address, cogop.ohr at gmail.com. And to send a prayer request, it is prayer.oldhoperoad at gmail.com. I just want to interject here that there's an advisory from the Ministry of Health that the COVID-19 cases are on the rise in Jamaica. Yes? Right, COVID not gone. It's right here. So then, can I invite us 
to start, if we have not been doing so, to practice the good hygiene practices, wash our hands often or sanitize with alcohol-based sanitizers, keep our distances six feet apart when you're talking, or wear your mask. We are going into public places. We don't know who has COVID. And from the persons who have had, who, have, who I have spoken to, the symptoms are not the usual, you know? When, like when it just started a couple of years ago, it's not the same presentation. However, let's just be careful. Mask up. There's nothing wrong with that. Mask up and be safe, everybody. So as you go through this week, just to remind you of what our pastor said today, as we go, let us submit to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Obey his voice whether or not we think it makes sense. Just obey his voice, knowing that he will give us the words to speak as we go. And as we have the conversations, no matter what they are around, make sure that we end them with the good news of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Good. Is it morning? Yes. Good morning, everyone. Just a little extra announcement. In October, we'll be having our parish convention. Amen? Amen. Just a few know about it. And um, this year again, we'll be having a mass choir. Let me see those who were on the mass choir last year. Amen. Just a few persons. So this year, we want 47G to be very and well represented, right? Right, 47G? Mass choirs are coming together of the choirs in the parish and the the parish convention consists of all the churches in Kingston and St. Andrew and we want to be there and give our full support um, the rehearsals are starting this month because convention is in October and we want to be fully prepared and the first rehearsal will be on the 24th of this month, and I'm very proud to say our choir director will be Brother Brookwood. So you know we cannot miss that. We have to go and we have to support him. Last year we had seven persons from 47G. We want more this year. I believe that convention is going to be excellent. If International Assembly was excellent, we are going to be excellent here. Amen. Um, I'm seeking two additional persons for the praise team because we want the praise team, yes, Kingston and St. Andrew praise team. We're seeking two additional persons to make up the praise team for this year. God bless you. I will get more information to Sister Michelle. I got it this morning, this, this morning. So God bless you, people, everyone. Almighty God and ever loving Father, Lord mighty God, we come to you another day, mighty God. Father, great is your faithfulness towards the children of men this morning, almighty God. Father God, it's nothing good that we have done, but God, it's only because of who you are, Lord Jesus. And Father God, we are grateful for your mercy this morning. We are grateful for your loving kindness. We are grateful for your goodness this morning, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you, mighty God, that you do not reward us as all we deserve. But God, you extend mercy. You extend grace. And that is why we are here this morning, mighty God. Standing up on our graves this morning, mighty God. And so, Father, Lord Jesus, let us never cease to worship you, mighty God. Let us never cease to give you thanks and praise and lift up the banner of Jesus Christ this morning, almighty God. Father God, we just commit today in your hands. We commit today's service in your hands, almighty God. Lord, we are careful, Lord, to acknowledge you this morning. Acknowledge your presence and your sovereignty this morning. And we ask that your reign this morning, Jesus. We ask that you reign over today's service, almighty God. We ask that you sanctify us with your blood this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ this morning, almighty God. Father God, saturate this presence. 
saturate the atmosphere with your blood. In the name of Jesus Christ this morning, Almighty God, pull down every stronghold this morning. Every hiding this morning that seeks to exalt itself among you this morning, Almighty God. Lord, only you must be worshipped this morning. Only you must be praised. Only you must be glorified this morning, Jesus. And so we say, take center stage this morning, mighty God. Father God, Lord Jesus, we place, mighty God, the speaker this morning before you. Father, we lift him up before you, mighty God. Mighty God, he is just a man. But you are God. You are the all-powerful, mighty God. And so God, fill him with this morning, Jesus. Fill him with your power. Fill him with your anointing. Fill him with your Holy Ghost this morning, Jesus. Father God, we pray that God, as he speaks this morning, that his word will come with power. It will come, Lord, and quicken our hearts this morning, Jesus. Father God, we pray, oh God, that Lord, healing will be in his word. Deliverance will be in his word. Restoration will be in his word. Reconciliation will be in his word, almighty God. Father God, surround him this morning. Let your angels minister to him, mighty God. Father God, let his word go forth right now, Lord Jesus. And do what it needs to do this morning. Father, you know every need in this house. And so, God, let, your, let the word minister to every need right now, Lord Jesus. Father God, let your name be magnified this morning, oh God. Let your name be glorified this morning, Jesus. Father God, as the congregation, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, help us to be on one accord. Help us to be in unity this morning, Lord Jesus. Help us to truly worship you in spirit and in truth this morning, mighty God. Help us to put away self this morning. Help, help us, God, to say no to our feelings this morning. And say yes to God this morning, Jesus. And allow your power to move this morning through us, almighty God. Father God, Lord Jesus, reign this morning, God. Breathe upon the congregation this morning. Breathe your fresh breath. Breathe the anointing this morning, Almighty God. Let worship be in unity and in oneness this morning. Father God, the praise and worship team, touch them, Jesus. From the crown of their head to the sole of their feet this morning. Let service be in this morning, mighty God. Let it be about you this morning, mighty God. Let your name be magnified. Let your name be glorified this morning, Jesus. Father God, let when they speak, let, let when they sing this morning, Jesus. Truly, Lord, there will be an aroma this morning. A sweet aroma going up to you this morning, Jesus. Merciful God, that yokes will be destroyed, burdens will be lifted this morning, mighty God. Father God, touch them this morning. Release your fresh grace upon them. Release your fresh anointing upon them. Release your fresh fire upon them this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, even now, God, we pray over the offering. And God, we ask that your blessing to be upon the offering. Mighty God, bless those that have to give. And bless those even who are God that do not have to give. That Lord in coming time they will have to give almighty God. Father in the name of Jesus. Let your giving be fruitful this morning almighty God. Father help them to give from a cheerful heart. This morning Jesus. Help them to give and not wonder mighty God. Oh merciful God. Because you are our provider this morning. You are our deliverer. You are our strong tower. You are the way maker this morning, Jesus Christ. So, Father, this morning, mighty God, we commit everything in your hands this morning, mighty God. And, Lord, anything that I did not ask, mighty God, but, Lord, you know we need it this morning. Fail not to grant it unto us this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands and worship the Lord. Hallelujah.
take center stage in our lives, God. I like that. I like that. Amen. We will now be reading from today's scripture. It is taken from St. John 20, verses 1 to 22. We will be reading alternatively. I'll give you some time to find it. And we begin. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark unto the sepulchre, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Then, then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre. And we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth, and that other disciple, and came to the sepulchre. So, so they, they ran all together, and the other disciple did it outrun Peter, and, and came first to the sepulchre. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter following him, and went into the sepulchre, and seeth the linen clothes lying. And the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulchre, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again unto their own home. But Mary stood without at the sepulchre, weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre. And, and seeth two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said unto her, Mary. She turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I am yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled, for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had said so, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. Last verse. And, and when, when he had said this, he breathed upon them, them and said unto them, them Receive ye the Holy, Holy Ghost. Ghost. There endeth a reading of God's Holy Word. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Truly God has been good to us. Amen. Hallelujah. And to declare that I'm opening the floor for a testimony or two, so you can come, whoever it is there who has a testimony to share, 
You're welcome to share with us. Amen. Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus. It is a pleasure for me to be here this morning. God has been so good to me. If it has not been for the Lord who was on my side, I would not have been here this morning. God has kept me. He has talked to me. When I'm asleep and when the enemy approach, I just feel like a finger touched me, like someone touched me. And I wake up. Sometime when I'm asleep, I hear the voice said, Get, wake up and pray. And I begin to pray. And there come the enemy attack. But throughout all these attacks from the enemy, I was fasting and praying. So God show me things. And I am here. Not true with this altar that rise up against me. But through the mercy of God and through God that keep me. And I am here to tell anyone that is going through their go through. Stay on your knee. Stay at knee city in fasting and prayer. And have your faith and trust in God. Because when you trust in God and when your faith is there, God delivers. He heal, he delivers. He speak unto you like in the day of Moses. When you connect to God, it makes a difference. No weapon that form against you shall prosper. Because God has tell us in his word, and his word is true. His word, when you fast and pray, and you are at the place, do not mix your thing. Because God will take away himself, and your problem will multiply. But when you stay and trust in God, no weapon that form against you shall prosper. No altar that rise up against you shall defeat you. For God promised us that he will take care of us. And no matter what the enemy do, it cannot conquer you. We are a believer of Christ and we shall follow the word of Christ. I am here of a living testimony to tell you, brethren, that God is a God who heals and delivers. Hallelujah. And whatever you're going through, trust God, believe in God. And be in the place at all time. Holy, spiritual, and don't corrupt yourself because God will take away himself from you. That's my testimony. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Uh, we have one more testimony. Come ahead, brother. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefit. Forgive us all my sins and heal us all my diseases. I worship God this morning. I lift him up. I don't want to be ungrateful for sitting in, this, in my seat and let my mouth be mute when God has done something great and wonderful for me. You know, it's a couple weeks ago, you know, I happened to step on a nail and it went up about, about an inch into my foot. I tell you. It was a terrible experience. By the time when I go to the doctor, my, my foot was swollen and changed color. My sugar, sugar levels skyrocketed as a result. I had to give me injection and put me on drips. And it seemed as if that was the end of the road for me, that I wouldn't be able to, it looked like in the physical, that I wouldn't be able to walk and to continue with my work and normal life. But I trust God. You know, God worked through these doctors and also worked through me. There are times that you have to go to the hospital. You know, there are times you pray and there are times you have to use wisdom. You go to the hospital because the doctor, they serve their purpose. But God has been very good. Amen. You know, God has brought me through. I tell you, I feel some pain. I don't know if birth pain can really come to you. I, I've never seen birth pain. But they say the wickedest pain is the worst pain, more intense. But I wonder... I think this, can, this one could compare with it can night and day. It was there, I tell you. But God is good. He brought me through. He brought me through. Praise the Lord, he brought me through. Hallelujah, he brought me through. And how can my, my mouth be mute this morning? As the psalmist, I said, I bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually in my mouth because he has done great things for me we are I'm glad 
God is wonderful. God is wonderful. I just want to continue to really to serve him and to be faithful. You know, I've been thinking that, I, 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 that my life needs to go to a higher level because God has been good. When I think of many things I've went through in life that I could have lost my life. Many a difficult situation, many things that happened to me. I said, God is good, God is good. Only by the grace of God sometime in our life. Some things that have went to you, only through the grace of God. And some, some of them is miracle. But God is good. God is good. I can tell you something that so I shall not die but live and declare the works of Almighty God. Did you know that there are some of us that the devil will do anything to take us out because we, we, we are an obstacle to his kingdom and he watches us 24 7. Those of us that are living for Almighty God. But we can declare that I shall not die but live and declare the works of Almighty God. The devil is a liar. He has lost. He has lost. See, they are walking on my two feet. Oh, bless the Lord of my soul and all that is in me, bless his holy name. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Great things they have done. The devil has lost. The devil has lost. And to God be the glory. Great things he has done. Hallelujah. Come on. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Great things he has done. Hallelujah. I'm going to invite us to stand. We're going to be collecting this morning's offering. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Can I hear a joyful noise this morning? You don't sound so joyful. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This morning, this morning as we're going, we're going with Jesus holding our hands this morning. Amen. Anybody going with Jesus holding our hands this morning? Hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout, Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Jesus. Come on, say it again. Blessed Jesus. Blessed Jesus. Hold my hand. Hold my hand. Hallelujah. As I travel through this field with men, there is a friend.
stronger position and say, Your name is the highest. Your name is the greatest. Your name stands above them all. All oh, 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 thrones and dominions, all oh, hearts and positions.
a God. What a name it is. Nothing can stand again. Hallelujah. What a powerful name. What a name it is. The name of Hallelujah. 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 What a name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Death could not hold him. Hallelujah. The veil tore before him. Silence. The voice of sin and death. Hallelujah. That's the name on which we stand today. That's the name that we have, have been given to us. That of the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Every knee must bow and every tongue must confess. Because of, regardless of what is happening, Jesus Christ is Lord. He rules supreme. He's the sovereign one. And none can stop him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Could somebody just call that name before you say? Hallelujah. Do that again. One more time. Hallelujah. And one last time say. Hallelujah. 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 Great and mighty. Great and mighty is that name. Praise God. Praise God for Jesus. Praise God for Jesus. Hallelujah. He's a chain breaker. He's a chain breaker. Hallelujah. He has come to set the captives free. And I believe today that somebody who is bound by chains and fetters, hallelujah, Jesus, Jesus is in this house today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. The woman with the issue of blood said, I believe that since Jesus is passing, since he's here, if I could but just touch the hem of his garment, I know I would be made whole. Hallelujah. Is there such a faith in the house today? Yes, situations have existed for 12 years. You have tried all solutions and nothing has worked. But you have come to the house of God today and Jesus is here and you believe that if you could just touch. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Is there a faith today that can just touch? Just touch the hem of his garment. And I know I shall be made whole. Hallelujah. Keep standing for just this prayer, please. Sovereign God. We thank you for Jesus Christ who came into this world, was crucified, laid in the tomb, rose from the dead triumphantly, and today reign as King of Kings 
and Lord of Lords. I thank you, Lord, that you are here even now. And Father, I pray you, God, the sovereign God, would cause this to be a touching of the M of your garment moment. Every person here, Lord, who has issues and challenges and difficulties that has continued with them for long period, I pray that today, today you will cause faith to extend and that your people will believe today and in faith will touch. And I pray, Almighty God, that every person whose faith shall extend to touch you today, they shall be made whole. Their situations will change and you will be glorified. I declare that it is done. It is done in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. There's a song that says, I believe God. I believe God. It's a long time song. The younger ones wouldn't know it. Just ask him what you will and it shall be done. Trust and obey. But there is no other way. For I believe, I believe God. I believe that God today is just waiting for that touch. Hallelujah. Praise God. Today is Sunday, August 11th, 2024. And I'd like to use this opportunity to just say a very warm 47G greetings to all of you who are in the house today. Greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. I'd like to also extend greetings to those who have joined us online, those who are watching. And I've come to realize that we have some very faithful online viewers. And I want to use the moment to just recognize and appreciate those of you who continue week after week to be a part of this service. Um, you're a part of us virtually, and we hope that you'll be able to join us physically when the opportunity presents itself. But it is extended to you to today also that right there where you are viewing, watching this service, if you can just touch the hem of his garment, then you also will be made whole. Amen. Greetings one and all in Jesus' name. It's good to be back. I was not here for just one week, but it seems so long, and it's really good to be back in the house today. Myself and a, 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 a few others, members from this local church, were in attendance at the International Assembly of the Church of God of Prophecy, which was held in Orlando, Florida. And it was indeed a blessing. The Lord spoke to the Church of God of Prophecy in that assembly. And I want to encourage those of you who have not yet done so. It is still online and available to view some of these messages. I want to encourage you especially to look at the Saturday night, Saturday evening um, service, the over, the general, what is it now? I'm from the old school. I'm used to general overseer. It's the presiding bishop. 
addressed to the International Assembly. I believe that offers to the Church of God of Prophecy instruction and vision as to where the Holy Spirit is directing the church. Let me use the opportunity to also let those who are not aware know that you are indeed a part of a massive movement. movement. The Church of God of Prophecy has membership in the region of over 1.5 million across the globe. The Church of God of Prophecy operates in 135 countries. I believe that covers more than two-thirds of the world. Somebody can Google and tell me how many countries there are in the world. But the Church of God of Prophecy has churches and membership and is represented in over 135 countries. There are over 10,000 local churches that operates under the banner of the Church of God of Prophecy. And I just want to cause you to recognize that we are a global organization that God has raised up in these time and these days. And I also want to just share a few things from the assembly because I believe it is impactful to us. The theme for the International Assembly was on mission, reconciling the world to Christ. On mission, reconciling the world to Christ. What I found extremely interesting is that the messages and the word that came throughout that assembly was so much in keeping with what God has been saying to us here at 47G. It is time to go. That we have a mission and that mission is to reconcile the world to Christ. We have been given that mission, the purpose for which we exist. When I look at mission, it says mission is the reason for which you exist, the purpose to be fulfilled. And in bracket, it says, it is your one thing. It also says that mission is a specific task with which a person or a group is charged. So if we break that down, what God is saying to the Church of God of Prophecy in the theme that was given for the International Assembly is that we have been given a specific task which is the reason for our existence. It is the purpose that we must fulfill which is reconcile the world to Christ. How do we do that? We do that by the mission or the theme that God has given 47G, Old Oak Road. 
go. We do that by going. I want to just highlight a couple things that came out of the assembly that I was able to capture. The, the presiding bishop made a very profound statement that I want to share with you. Let me make sure I capture it right. He said, God's church does not have a mission. God's mission has the church. You need to think about it. It is not that we have been given this instruction, this purpose, assigned this duty, this task, and that is it. It is, and it will bear little, you know, uh, not much would be accomplished until God's mission is what have the church. In other words, we are called to be consumed by the purpose for which we exist. We are called to be fully engulfed in the mission of Christ. In other words, it is the mission that must have us. And until the mission have us, we are going to operate in hot and cold mode. And therefore, the call is for us to get to that place where the, we, we become the mission. The mission needs to have us totally engulf, encapsulate us. It is the reason for our existence. I'd like now to just share with you briefly today from the text that was read earlier. In keeping with all of that, I'd like to read from St. John chapter 20. I want to start reading at verse 19. 19 through 23. St. John chapter 20, 19 through 23. Then the same day at evening... Being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands. And his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus 
to them again. Peace be unto you. As my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. I'd like for you to underline that. Note that. As my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sin, ye remit. They are remitted unto them. And whosoever sin, ye retain. They are retained. Almighty God, your words are before us today. Your words are spirit and they are life. I pray today, Lord, that you will cause that your anointing will be upon me, that I will speak your words with clarity and with boldness. I pray that hearts will be receptive to receive and I ask Almighty God, Lord, that the spirit of wisdom and revelation will descend upon us today and we will receive the revelation, the instruction that you have for us today. I pray, Lord God, that your words will be confirmed with signs following. Bless your words to our hearts today. Let it be for the glory and honor and praise of God, the Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The commission that we have been given, as recorded in St. Matthew and Mark, Matthew chapter 28, Mark chapter 16, it says to us, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Baptize in the name of Jesus and so on. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. That's the commission, the instruction as recorded by Mark and Matthew. It was the same setting where Jesus gave this commission that John records in John chapter 20. It is the same instruction that says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. John in chapter 20 records that instruction in a slightly different way. Because John says in verse 21, he tend to summarize all of that. And he said in verse 21, peace be unto you as the Father hath sent me, so send I you. There is a lot involved in that statement because it would not be sufficient to just be able to say go preach teach because for, th for, for three years Jesus was carrying out his father's mandate and it was all of that that Jesus was now transferring to his disciples. In St. John chapter 6 and verse 38, Jesus made a statement where he said, I came.
came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. I do nothing of myself. He said, he said, all that I do is what I see the Father doing. And this is what he was now saying to his disciple. I have only done the will of my Father. All that I do is what I see the Father doing. And he's now saying to his disciples, as the Father sent me into the world. In the exact way I am sending you. This instruction from Jesus continued and is is, is, is stated in other places, in other ways. But I want to draw your attention to the next verse that follows. Having been given the instruction that as the Father sent me, even so sent I you. It says, and when he had thus said, and when he had said this, he breathed on them. And said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. This is very instructive for us. Because when we look back at Jesus' ministry, Jesus did not do anything until the scripture record that the Spirit of God descended upon him in the form of a dove. Although he was Jesus, he would have been filled with the Holy Ghost before he was born. His earthly ministry was activated after that, he had received the demonstration, the visible form of the Holy Ghost when he was baptized of John in Jordan. We ought to also recognize that we cannot do nothing without the Holy Ghost. So, moment please. So, what, what, what the instruction given to us here is for us to recognize that the Holy Ghost is a requirement for us to go. As the Father sent the Son, so has the Son sent us. But before we can go, we need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It is not something that can be accomplished in the flesh. It must be accomplished in the Spirit. It is not uh, something we do through our learning and degrees and education. It is what we do by the Spirit. You know, let me draw your attention to the story as recorded in, in, in Acts. Acts chapter 8. A story about Philip. Philip got the instruction, Acts chapter 8 and verse 26. It says, And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, go towards the south, unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem, 
unto Gaza, which is desert. This is an instruction that Philip got. Philip the evangelist. Philip who had gone down to Samaria and preached Christ. Philip was now told that he must leave Samaria and he must go into a place that is desert. What is it that we know about desert? A desert is typically a place where there is no life form. You don't expect to see people in a desert. You don't expect to find a crowd and a congregation in a desert. But the instruction that was given was for Philip to go down to the, to the desert. It says, and he arose and went. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority on the Candice, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasury, had come to Jerusalem for to worship. As we seek to carry out this commission, and as we seek to go as the Spirit of God is bidding us to go, we need the Holy Ghost. We cannot operate on man's wisdom. It is not time for us to sit down and analyze and determine what is logical and not logical. What we need to go is that we need a word from God. We need to hear from God. And that's the only thing that should determine whether or not we go. I believe too often we have rationalized and we have sought to go in a logical flow and we have sought to use our own intellect to determine the work of God and how he's to carry it out. But I believe that as God is saying to us that we must go, we need to recognize that we must be in tune with the Holy Spirit. And whenever he says go, we must go. Whenever he says speak, we must speak. Because he has a man in the wilderness, in the desert, that is waiting on us. want to make this personal. As children of God, as people who are led by the Spirit of God, as people who have committed their lives to Christ, who have accepted this commission, I firmly believe that there is nothing that happens to us by chance. I believe that our lives are planned and ordered and orchestrated by God himself. And I want to call us to that place where we are walking in the spirit. I believe there are too many times when God speaks to us, we say, no, sir, I wonder what that means. And we stop to rationalize and to see whether or not it makes sense. Because we need to know before we go, And sometimes
is, if it was us in the case of Philip, we would have had an argument or a reasoning with God. Now, you can imagine God saying to any of us, leave here and go down to the desert place. We would have had a, we need to have a conversation. And, and, and we say it, and sometimes, you know, in, in, in joke or glibly, we say it, that if God, if, if before me do that, God himself have to come down and tell me so. And those are statements that we have often heard that God no say. He's not that type of person, so he needs to make sure and show me sign before me no says me. Philip would have or could have assessed and analyzed and rationalized whether or not going to the desert makes sense. A matter of fact, after assessing the situation, some would come to the conclusion it couldn't be God because God sent me to preach to people and no people not down there. But God's instructions are very often not logical. God's instructions very often to the human does not make sense. Because his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And his ways are higher than our ways. What we need to know is that we have committed and dedicated our life to God, to Christ, and the Spirit of God lives in us. We need to move from the place where we talk about something tell me say. Or me get a feeling, say. And we need to get to the place where we know that we are hearing the voice of God. And when God speaks, all we need to do is to obey. But I think we, and I say we because it includes me. We continue to be like the disciples. Because in this passage earlier, and I preached on it the last time, when Jesus had very clearly told the disciples, I am going to be crucified, I am going to be raised from the dead on the third day, when Mary come back or came back and said, I have seen the Lord, he's risen. The scripture says, they believe not. When he appeared to two men on the Emmaus road and they went and told the others, we have seen the Lord, he is risen. Scripture says they believe that. When we are told by, 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 by the word of God and by Christ that we don't need to worry about what we carry with us or what we say or what we do. For who? For the Holy Spirit in the same hour he will give to us the word that we need to say. We believe not because if God won't talk to 
that prime minister or businessman or university lecturer or professor, he wouldn't send me. He would pick somebody like Brother Andrew who used to deal with them people there. So when God says you go, we believe not. And therefore, we need to get to that place where we are in tune with the Holy Spirit. It is his voice and his voice alone that makes the difference. And I believe that God is calling us today from a place of unbelief. A place where we come to know the voice of God. And when he speaks, all that matters is that it is his voice and we move in obedience. It was Paul who one time when he was, when he was about to go to Jerusalem, to be put in prison. Everybody was saying to Paul, Paul, they don't like you down there. They have said it, that any time you come up there, they are going to take you and put you in prison. Nonetheless, Paul says, I go bound of the Spirit to Jerusalem. Very knowledgeable that bonds and afflictions await me there. But it doesn't matter what awaits me. The one thing that matters is that I have been given a commission to go. And all I am doing is obeying the commission. I am going. I don't care who is awaiting me. I don't care what's awaiting me. I don't care what matters. My commission that I have received from the Holy Spirit is to go and I am going. In that incident with Paul, there was a prophet, a prophet who even prophesied because he took his belt and he wrapped it around him and tied. And he said, so shall they tie whoever owned this belt. Notwithstanding all of that, Paul says, I am instructed by the Holy Spirit to go and I am going. There is a call to us today to go and we need, irrespective of what the challenges and the inadequacies are, we need to go. I want to wrap this up. Philip obeyed the voice of God to go down to the desert. And when he went to the desert, he found one man. And as Philip went, all the instruction that he got was get up and go to the desert. In verse 29, Acts chapter 8. This is where he got the second instruction. And God has a way of giving instructions in bites. Philip 
Get up from where you are. Go to the desert. And I have come to realize that very often you will not get the next instruction until you have obeyed the first instruction. A matter of fact, I find that even Google Maps do the same thing to us. It says, make a right turn on all up road. And then it remains silent. It remains silent until you have made that right turn. And you have traveled the distance. And when you are approaching the next turn, it may say, Right turn in one mile. Or it may just say, take the next left. And this is what sometimes we struggle with because we want to know the destination and all the details that is involved. Philip never heard anything else. Go down to the desert. Can you imagine us again? Why God, what down there? What? Philip obeyed. And in verse 29 it says, Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join yourself to this chariot. Again, in the face of it, this was an important man. He was the man in charge of all the queen of, of, of Ethiopia, all of her possession. And here is the instruction, go draw near to this chariot. Again, you know, we would have think, boy, but God, if I draw near them, I think I rob me, come for rob them. Eh? Them see a stranger drawing near to one bearing the treasures. The logical thing is to say, no, God, me can't read because they're going to think uh, I am a thief. Uh, and if they ever think that I am a thief, they will kill me without questions. The instruction was, draw near to this chariot. And Philip, it says, run thither. And draw near. <laughs> you know what I'm realizing, Sister Karina? To serve God and walk in obedience. In Jamaican style. You have to go on like you don't have no sense, you know. Because any sensible person would rationalize and assess the risk and the dangers. And the minute you start doing that, disobedience lies at your door. But Philip went and he drew near. And just as the point where he drew near to the chariot, he heard the man reading from the book of Isaiah. And as he read, Philip just listened. And the Spirit said to him one more time, speak now. 
And the message was not that I am an evangelist, Philip, and I have come to preach to you. And you are from Ethiopia, and you need salvation, and you are sinners over there, and you need to repent. The Spirit said, understand what thou readest. Nothing about repentance and salvation and sinners and all of sin. And, and understand it thou what thou readest. You know the story. Ethiopian eunuch says, How can I understand? Except somebody should explain it to me. And in verse 35, it says, and one more time, Philip opened his mouth. And he began at the same scripture. And from there, he preached Christ. Preached Jesus. This is something that I want us as we go. In obedience to the command of the Lord. I want for us to be sensitive and allow the Holy Spirit to help us to begin where everybody is. Anybody that God has sent us to. Begin right there with them. But end up at Christ. and the high price of food if anybody went down to market over the last couple of weeks. And that's where they are and that's where the conversation that's what they are reading but having started with them on that note you must end up with Christ. Jesus. At the end of it, you must get them to Jesus. And that's what the scripture says. Philip began at the exact place that he was reading from. Where he was reading from was about he was brought as a lamb before the slaughter. And, and, and so he opened a, another sheep before the share is dumb, he opened not his mouth. But Philip, as the Holy Spirit directed him, was able to leave from there and end up at Jesus. Let me tell you something, church of God. Jesus is the answer for the world today. He's the only answer. And he is who the world needs today. And we need as we go to start recognizing that we must point people to Jesus. So as we leave here today, What is God saying to us? He's saying to us in simple language. The words of Jesus. In St. John chapter 20. 
as the Father hath sent me into the world, so have I sent you into the world. He's saying to us that when we go into the world, we must make sure that we are going, being led by the Spirit. And he's saying to us that whatever situation we encounter and wherever the conversation is, whatever the world is reading from, we must read it with them. But at the end of it, we must end up at Jesus. I want to pray for somebody today. The Bible says that the Ethiopian eunuch had gone up to Jerusalem to worship. The Ethiopian eunuch had a heart that was searching. A heart that was seeking after the true and living God. Wanting to find God. God had created in him that kind of yearning and emptiness that he, he journeyed all the way from Ethiopia up to Jerusalem to find God. There is a heart that is listening today. Online or you are here. You know in your heart there's a search for God. There's a search for God. You have heard about him and you recognize his goodness. But you want a personal, a personal relationship with him. You want to know him for yourself. And maybe that's why you are here today. You ended up here. And you may not even sure how you end up here. You have tuned in to listen to this. And you're not even sure. It is not by chance. It is the Holy Spirit. And I'm saying to you today. If your heart, if you are seeking... You want more of God. You want to know God. You are like this Ethiopian. You have read the scriptures. You, you desire, but you need help to find what this meaneth. I invite you to come to this altar today. If you are here today and you are seeking for God, seeking more of God, Seeking clarity as to where he wants you and what he's saying to you. God has been speaking to you. Some of you has been spoken to you in dreams and you're not even sure what he's saying. He has been bringing things to your mind and it is not clear. You don't know. You know God is saying, but you don't know exactly. And you want to hear clarity from God today. I invite you to come to this altar. If you are not saved, if you are not saved, and you know, you know that God has been calling you. Scripture says, if you hear his voice, 
Do not harden your heart. You have been You have been at a place of uncertainty because there are decisions to be made. Your dis they, there are decisions that you need to make. You want to hear what God is saying. That is genuinely what you want. It is genuinely the desire. You're not coming to say, God, this is what I want and I want you to do it this way. So you're not coming to instruct God, to tell God, make it work this way. Because I have figured it out, and I know that this is what is best for me, so make it work this way. But you really are coming for to worship, because you want to hear and obey only what God is saying. That's, that's your desire. To please him. To do what he wants you to do. If that's really your situation. Decisions to be made. If you have been having dreams. And you're not sure what God is saying. Or you're not even sure if it is God. People have been saying things to you. Some of you can't even sleep at night because you are thinking about things, troubled by things that is happening. Jesus is the answer you're looking for. He wants to make it plain to you today. Yes, Lord. Praise team, there's a song that says, chorus, I want for you to do it a couple times for me. This is my desire to honor you. Lord, with all my heart, I worship you. All I have within me, I give you. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment that I'm awake, your way is what I want. Let's do that a couple times. This is my at the altar, make sure that this is it.
ahead. Yes, Lord, that's my desire. Yes, Lord, every moment. Have your way, Lord. children have come to the altar. They come, Lord, seeking to hear your voice, to receive clarity and direction concerning words that you have spoken to them. Lord, you are the God who sent Jesus Christ into this world to reconcile us back to our Father. You have given us your Spirit, Holy Spirit. You said, Lord Jesus, that when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will lead and guide us into all truth. Like the Ethiopian eunuch, Lord, your people have come to worship. But they are seeking, Lord, clarity. Concerning what you're saying. Oh God, there are dreams that has puzzled and has occupied their thoughts continually. But thank you, Heavenly Father. Holy Spirit, revealer of truth, I pray that you'll guide them into all truth. As their hearts yearn for you and as they seek after you, I pray that the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God will descend upon them even Lord, for those who have decisions that they need to make, decisions that they are struggling with God, relationships that they are struggling with God, I pray, Father, that you would reveal to them in clear ways Lord, send the Phillips. Send the Phillips 
who will expound the word unto them. Teach them, Lord, to hear your voice. And I pray, O oh God, that they will have hearts to obey. Thank you, Heavenly Father. You said, Lord, that we who are earthly fathers know how to give good gifts to those that ask. How much more you, our Heavenly Father, will give the Holy Spirit to your children. Revealer of truth, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, as you breathe on the disciples, and said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, breath of God, breathe on this altar, I pray, Almighty God. That they will receive the Holy Ghost. Thank you now, Lord. Thank you even for those online have joined in. Breathe on them wherever they are, God. Breathe on them, living God. Cause them to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And Lord, I pray for all of us whom you have called and you have said, as the Father sent me, even so send I you. Lord, help us to be obedient to the commission. And bring us to that place, O God Almighty, where your mission have us. Where we are consumed by your mission. And it becomes our one thing. Yes, Lord. As the great evangelist God of the early church said, give me souls or I die. God, let us be similarly consumed by your mission. Let us become your mission, God. That our purpose, life's purpose, is to reconcile the world to Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I pray for Fitzroy. Lord, you have called him for such a time as this. A song that says there is a voice calling me from an old rugged tree and it bids me draw closer to thee leave this world far behind there are new heights for you to climb and a new place in me you will find whatever it takes to draw me closer to you. That's what I'll be willing to do. I'll change sunshine for rain, comfort for pain. That's what I'll be willing to do. In the name of Jesus. 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 
Fill your son with your Holy Spirit even now, God. Fill him with your spirit and your power. Lord, empower him for the call that you have on his life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And I declare it now that he will never be the same again. He will never be the same again. He shall never go back, oh God, from the place that he has left. Spirit of God. Spirit of God. Spirit of God. Give him direction. Fill the thirsting, the quench, quench the thirsting of his soul, Lord. Fill him with more of you. In the name of Jesus. I pray you'd anoint his hands, Lord. Oh God, and you'd anoint him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. That he shall do exploits for you, Lord. And God, he will never go back. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. God bless you. And I'd like for you to leave here. Not like the disciples. But leave here believing. Believing. That the voice of God is speaking to you. And do not doubt him. Can we praise the Lord? Turn to your neighbor and say, how are you, neighbor? Do you know what is happening this evening at 6? Find out if they know. Did you get a response? Ask your neighbor again if they know what is happening this evening at 6 p.m. Yes, man. Rally and sacrificial giving. You can't afford to miss it. I can tell you it's going to be good. And um, don't leave nobody home. Bring your grandma, your grandpa, your brother, your sister, your neighbor. Invite them. We are expecting a very good time in the presence of the Lord. Refreshment will be on sale. And you don't have to worry about anything. Just come with yourself and your money and your neighbor and your brothers and your sisters, all right? God bless you. Can we stand as we get ready to give God thanks for his blessing on us and to prepare us for this evening and all the blessings that we're going to be receiving. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. And the church say...